The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. This is Vince Russo's The Brand. What's going on everybody, this is Brandon Stransky here for another edition of Alterna TV and this is going to be a very special 4th of July edition. Hoping we can get this out on time to where it's released tomorrow. If not, it's no big deal just as long as it's close by the holiday and it's well, we still have the spirit of the holiday in mind. Uh, what makes this episode so special is, uh, I, I know you guys have heard me mention a few times uh, either in through columns or through video descriptions that uh, yes, I am a libertarian. And I want, kind of wanted to dedicate this episode to explaining uh, exactly what that's about. Kind of give a, not, not you know, uh, it's kind of like a brief introduction to it. Almost like, you know, a, a commercial. Commercial for kind of explain what we're about, dispel some myths, and uh, a little something for my fellow Christians at the end of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I would like to explain when it comes to libertarianism is I'm sure there are a few things you have heard about us. That I just kind of wanted to squash right now, get that out of the way. Uh, one of the big things I've always heard about people like to say about that don't quite understand libertarianism is they. So one of the things they always hear is that we're just Republicans who like to smoke weed. And while there are, a, while I'm sure there are a few people who you know wear the libertarian label who do uh, believe that, who do actually uh, uh, would be accurate to describe them that way. For the most part, libertarians are. Uh, it's you can't really define us as liberal or conservative because really uh, a lot of the stuff that we value and believe in kind of falls on both sides of the spectrum, which is why we're kind of our own thing and why we hate being um, kind of lumped into those groups because we're actually much, much different than either of the two of them. And, uh, and the big thing also we always hear is, you know, that... Uh, because we, we believe in keeping, you know, being able, to, being entitled to the fruits of our labors, and people, uh, and again, a lot, of, mostly from liberals who will say, "Oh, you guys just don't, you don't care about helping people. You don't want, you just want it. You're just greedy. You want to keep your money." And again, while there are, while I'm sure there are a few people who wear the libertarian label who that that statement can be applied to, for the most part, you can't really make a blanket statement about libertarianism like that because, for the most part. We do want, we do care about people. We do want to help people, but we believe that um, doing that through freedom, liberty, and voluntary action, and doing things on our own, is a much, much better solution than rather than just you know taking people's paychecks and then threatening them with jail time or violence if they don't comply. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, uh, get down to our core beliefs. Uh, our biggest, uh, probably the biggest one that we. Uh, believe in is individual rights. Basically, we believe that there is no minority smaller than the individual. So basically, we believe in protecting individual rights. We believe that. Um, sorry, I have a. It's time to take me to put stuff together in my head. Um, we believe that individual rights should be protected. Nobody should be forced along, forced to go along with something that they don't agree with. Pretty, pretty cut and dry. Uh, we believe in owning private property. Basically, you have the right to purchase and own property that is yours and no one else's. Now, me personally, I believe there can't there public property can be a thing too, but again, that has to be within the consent of the people that are involved. Uh, we believe in something called common law, which is which basically translates into no victim, no crime. Basically, if there if you get arrested, if you get you know. Uh, any kind of citation from any form of government, whether it's local, state, or federal, and what they're citing you for did not have any victim, then we don't believe a crime has been committed. A uh, perfect example, if you're sitting at a red light and it just it won't change, there's no one coming, you're sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and eventually you say, I'm tired of sitting here, I'm going to run this red light. And nobody comes through the intersection, and you just run it, nothing happens, nobody comes by, that's no crime because no crime has been committed because there is no victim. Now, if there is a red light and you say, screw it, I'm going to run it, and you end up causing a wreck, well then, yeah, that, that is a crime. You 
you broke the law and caused an accident. You caused victims. So what you did was wrong. Uh, we believe that you have the right to choose what you want to fund with the rights with the fruits of your labor instead of having your money taken from you and then used to fund things you don't agree with. Personally, I think we should pull our money out of a lot of our uh, a lot of stuff we're involved in overseas. If you're up to me, I wouldn't be paying for these bombs being used to kill innocent people in the Middle East. But that's just me. I don't believe in that. Uh, we believe in equal rights. Uh, that This one might uh, bother a little bit of people, but uh, and this is something I personally believe in as well. Is, is I don't believe in, and us in general, we, I don't believe, we don't believe in uh, special rights for special groups. We believe everybody should be treated the same. We believe in human rights that are applied across the board to everybody. We don't think anybody should be treated special. We don't believe anybody should be treated different. We believe everybody should be treated the same just because they're human. And then also we reject the use of force to attain any goal. If, um, if something is needed, we believe that the free market can provide for it. Uh, whether that's for any, any, like any type of social welfare programs we have, we believe that the free market can provide for it through the voluntary actions of good people who have money that want to do something to help people. Wow, that's quite a bit so far. But yeah, that's basically um, just a quick little little inf information on the things that we're into, the things that we believe in, the things that, you know, the this, basically the core values of what of what this uh, country, uh, the foundation of this country, the you know the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and uh, sadly we're watching every day just watching these things being dismantled day by day, and uh, it's just. You know, son, someone's got to do something about it, and I guess you know if that means me coming on here making videos explaining why uh, why I believe that libertarianism is the right way to go, and so be it. And any and also too, I'm sure you guys have remembered me mentioning that yes, I am indeed a Christian, and I can act. And some people are probably wondering, well, how do you you know make uh, how you make those two compatible? And it's actually a uh, very good question, and I actually. Uh, got some stuff together for that. Uh, one of the th things I always like to hear from people saying is that, uh, oh, you're a Christian. Why don't you give your, you know, why are you against uh, income taxes if you, you know, if Jesus said to give your stuff away to help the poor? The thing is, is that Jesus did indeed say, yes, give your things to the poor to help them. He did not, but the thing is, though, he said for you, that's you watching this to do that yourself to voluntarily give your things to help the needy, to help the less fortunate, instead of relying on a government entity to take that from your neighbor by force. Uh, another thing, too, that, uh, that uh, Jesus talked about that is, makes uh, libertarianism compatible with Christianity is, of course, the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated, which falls into uh, free speech. Basically, is we don't believe that Anybody, we don't believe that speech should be censored. Any speech, even the stuff that's considered hate speech, because we believe that even though you have the right to free speech, you are protected to say what you want from the government and any type of government entity, but that doesn't make you free from the consequences of said speech. Like for, I'll bring up a perfect example. Uh, I know I'm kind of going off a bit of a tangent. I'll get back to Jesus and the Golden Rule, but. Uh, with free speech, basically, we expect uh, us to we can we believe that we can self enforce our own speech. But essentially, um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop an example. Um, you know, say there's uh, some racial stuff going on and somebody drops an end bomb. You're certainly free to use that word. However, the person that you say that to, I fully expect them to pop you in the face for it. That's just how it goes. You say something stupid, you get wrecked for it. That's how it should be. But not but not governments going around silencing speech, censoring speech, because people because it hurts people's feelings. If if something somebody says bothers you, you handle that yourself. You don't get somebody else to intrude on somebody else's rights. Handle it yourself like an adult. Anyway, back to the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated big thing that Jesus taught and one of the cornerstone values of libertarianism. One of the cornerstones. Um, one of the things that Jesus had told us about, or, or told his disciples about, and it's something that, of course, we 
continue on is, when he told his disciples to go out and start preaching to towns, he said, told them, if they will not take you, leave and, and shake shake the dust off of your robes and sandals, take not even a speck of their dust with you when they leave, when you leave. Essentially what that means is, and he has said this in several different times, was people who don't want to pick up their cross and follow him, basically leave them to their fate. Leave, let them be until they start interfering with what we're trying to do. So essentially, you know, leave, leave them be. If they're not going to follow, Leave them be. Don't buy, don't associate with them. Just let them do their thing. They're the ones who are going to be sorry in the end. Uh, what's the other thing? Uh, let me pull out this. Uh, I'll pull it out in a minute. But uh, uh, the encounter that he had with the rich man when he uh, when someone said, "What is it that I need to do to uh, get into heaven?" and Jesus said, "Give up your possessions to the poor and follow me." The rich man he told this to eventually left. Jesus turns to his disciples and then says, I tell you the truth. A, a camel has a better chance of going through the eye of a sewing needle than a rich man does going into heaven. Now, did he say that we need to start taking this guy's possessions forcefully and handing them over to the less fortunate? No. He said, this guy's just not going to get into heaven. And that's, and, that's, and that's on him. That's that man's responsibility and his uh, consequences for his actions, individualism, and of course, and and there's one verse that sounds quite an awful lot like Jesus is trying to get around paying temple tax, and again, I'll go ahead and just pull, actually read that verse uh, just so you know we have that out there, and we can just and if anybody wants to discuss it, I am more than happy to discuss that. See, it is Matthew 17, 24 through 27. I'm going to go ahead and read that and pull it up. Yeah, Matthew 17, 24 through 17. Oh, well, I got that all wrong. 24 through 27. Payment of the temple tax. On their arrival in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and asked him, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, Peter replied. Then he went into the house. But before he had a chance to speak, Jesus asked him, What do you think, Peter? Do kings tax their own people or the people they have conquered? They tax the people they have conquered, P Peter replied. Well then, Jesus said, the citizens are free. However, we don't want to offend them, so go down to the lake and throw in a line. Open the mouth of the first fish you catch, and you will find a large silver coin. Take it and pay the tax for both of us. Now again, that sounds, now me personally, that sounds like he's kind of getting around paying that tax. Certainly up for discussion, and I am certainly up to discuss it if anybody is interested. And then, uh... And I, uh, again, I think this, I wanted to throw this one in there because I had asked uh, Vince about it and I didn't want to make sure I had this in there because I didn't want to let that question go to waste. Um, and of course, I'm sure you all have heard the story about the time that Jesus was flipping over tables and cracking the whips and throwing people out of the temple. And I think that that would equate to, um, and this is just my opinion, my opinion only, um, that I believe that this can kind of relate to private property rights and that you have these people coming into his father's house, the house that belongs to his father, and doing these things that don't really, and basically soliciting, soliciting in his father's house. And again, those are just a, just a few examples of why I believe that Christianity is indeed compatible with libertarianism and why I think that libertarianism is the most compatible uh, political ideology uh, with Christianity. Again, those are just my opinions, citing the example uh, with the examples I cited. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Happy Fourth of July for those of us, or for those of you who are in the states. And I just hope and pray that you guys, that everybody else, one day can uh, enjoy. We can we can have freedom and liberty spread across the world. That's my goal. I want to see freedom and liberty around the world. Let's take the spirit of '76 and make it worldwide. 1776. Have a good one, guys. Catch me at BSRider67 on Twitter, and I will see you all later.
This is Vince Russo's The Brand.